You remember this game, Radical? I don't know, a demo disc? It was always fun stuff. Naked Jakey has a fun little video that you can find on demo discs that you get from, like, Pizza Hut and whatnot. Just how amazing that was back in the day. Really excellent way of discovering games. And play games that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. What? I'm gonna assume that I have to jump in there. I wanna check out these mushrooms first. Mushrooms! Oh my god, look at the model! Look at the fucking mo- Look at that goddamn aesthetic! Fuck, I love that! These look awesome! Oh, I want PS1-styled indie games. So bad. Oh, no. Thank God for ledge grabbing. Hi, Mr. Gem. Well, you know, the walking backwards controls are, like, super solid. Like, if you want to walk forward, it's, like, <laughs> hell on wheels. But if you want to walk backwards, it's actually... It just works. Exactly as you think it would. Oh no. Okay. What the fuck? Yes! <laughs> Victory! It is sweet. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be totally fine until they did it really, really freaking fast in the middle there. Thanks, Nate. I, I really love this overlay that I've created for 4x3 games. I don't get to use it that often because obviously most games created nowadays are the ones that I mostly play are in 16x9. But every now and then we can go back and play an old game and it's in 4x3 and I can use this overlay that I worked really hard on. The difference between 4x3 and 16x9, so those are multipliers. That's like the lowest multiplier for the values. So 1080p is a multiplied value of 16x9. Whereas 4x3 is something by like 360 by 480 or something like that. And the lowest multiplier of that is 4x3. And 4x3 is a more square-like ratio. Whereas all modern games are on widescreen, so they're in 16 by 9. Nasty Nork! <laughs> That's. <laughs> that ain't even half bad. <laughs> I was expecting for him to stomp on it or something. He just gave it sentience and more maneuverability. Doesn't seem like that bad of a guy at all. Oh, oh, spaceship. Oh, actually, this has like solid controls. Actually, God, why can't the entire game control like this? The one time when like a platform has better controls <laughs> than the character itself. Harpsichord. I love harpsichords and spooky levels. There's a cliche that I can get behind. I just watched a video earlier about a guy complaining about uh, sleigh bells being in winter music all the time. And just how prevalent that kind of thing is. It seemed kind of silly. Like every now and then you hear like people uh, about people that really don't like a certain instrument being used for a certain cliche. Like, some people hate, like, steel drums being used for, like, underwater sequences. But I really don't mind it. Not really. Like, maybe I just don't play enough of these games in a row for that kind of thing to matter to me. And like I said, I love just <laughs> harpsichord always being used for spooky music. I think that's just perfect. Nothing. Oh, you totally grabbed on the ledge, you piece of shit! Sitars and desert levels, yeah. 
Although I think desert levels actually do have like a fairly uh good thing. I loved when uh, Rayman Origins used uh, <laughs> didgeridoos to the point where they called the level the world that was based on didgeridoo land or something like that. I gotta say, if 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 the controls were just a little bit more modern, this would basically be like a really really damn good game to me. I wonder if the second one improved the controls, because I do know that a second one exists, but I haven't uh, booted it up yet. Oh god! Cursed platforms! Doink doink. <laughs> oh, I love the shuffle. I gotta use it more often. It's so good for repositioning, or not having to like control, control with the analog stick. This place looks beautiful. I really, really wish that uh, people were making like stuff like this in the vein of like, you know, we've got pixel art everywhere and pixel art is like a aesthetic that a lot of people love. I don't know why like nobody's bringing this back. There's a few, few games that are using the uh, low polygon kind of style. There's a game that you can find called uh, Poly Bridge. It has a very, very PS1 inspired look, I think. Although it's too clean for it. Like, that's the thing, is that, like, I think the pixel art just lends, like, a little bit of grime to things. Whereas all the low poly, poly games that are coming out, like Kingdoms and Castles and Poly Bridge and Cluster Truck, are so clean in comparison to this. And that dirt, that grime, is, like, the thing that I love about it. That imperfection. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. Oh, it's bad, guys. Oh, it's bad. Oh god, why? I almost thought it was charging up to just kick him like a soccer ball. I don't want to fight you, Flippy! Controls could be better, but other than that, I am quite enjoying the setup, as it stands. Bosses could be better, but I'm just incredibly picky about that kind of thing. And even modern games sometimes don't have, you know, like, enjoyable bosses. It's an art that has not quite been perfected, really, by a lot of people. Honestly, you could almost say that this game would be better without the violence. You know? Like, that was such a radical idea back in the 90s, obviously. But, like, everything that's enjoyable about this game is everything except for the combat. Like, the combat sucks. But collecting things, platforming, that's all fun. So you could actually just strip out like the bosses and maybe a good lot of the enemies and you actually have a pretty solid game might have to have something else to spice it up somehow I don't know I've just been thinking about like ah, why wouldn't you go forward there croc I've just been thinking about like non-violent games recently and ways to actually have fun without resorting to uh, violence being like the main gameplay gimmick. There's a lot of games that have been experimenting with that kind of thing. And obviously like Nine in the Woods that we played on stream was a really, really good experience. We indeed. We indeed. <laughs> Change the bosses with some nice puzzles. Yes! Yes! Have some platforming, have some puzzles, and you just got yourself, like, just really solid game. Violence is used as a crutch quite a bit 
There was a YouTube video that I was watching about that. I'm not sure if I want to toot it too much, though, because I feel like it didn't go into, like, alternatives quick enough. I feel like it was just talking about how violence is used predominantly as a gameplay mechanic, and how we haven't, like, fleshed out, like, other game mechanics, like, nearly as much as we've fleshed out violence as a mechanic. Which is true. But then again, you're led to the reality that a lot of people just don't want the status quo to be changed. And a lot of people are totally fine playing the same game over and over again, as franchises have shown us. And there are actually very, very few people like myself who want to experience, like, new things. And seek out new experiences. What? No. No! <laughs> you piece of crap! What? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> 